Hey y'all, Scott back here in uh, Houston, Texas doing Southern style. So we're going to do a little patch, what I call a butterfly patch. A lot of these guys call it California patch, but I learned 28 years ago in Louisiana it's called a butterfly patch. So it is what it is. So you got a hole here. Rather than cutting back to the studs, we're going to do this patch and I'm going to show you how to do it. So a piece of sheetrock, you just want it to be two inches or so on each side, top and sides. So you're going to flip the board and do the back side and we're just going to cut basically a tic-tac-toe right inside straight down inside that patch that's that way then we'll come up here we'll do the same thing for the top like so so i call it a tic-tac-toe so you're going to cut that and what we're doing is we're peeling the outside so we just cut the back of the sheetrock we're just going to slide that sheetrock off of there and you're basically leaving the inside so peel that all the way around and preferably you do it without the recessed edge because that recessed edge is a little tough so there's your butterfly so you stick that in there like so and we'll come back to the video when I get a little mud and I'll show you how to install. All right, everybody, we're back. So we cut this butterfly patch. This is a little banged up right here. Sometimes you might want to just square it up completely, but we're just going to fill that in. So we'll come around. I'll put just a little bit on the inside to help it kind of stick. So basically the paper that we peeled the sheetrock off is going to act like tape. So you mud it up real good inside and out. Put your patch in the middle and we're just going to kind of wipe this like tape. So make sure that you have enough mud behind all your paper or a blister and you just wipe outside all the way around. Make sure you get that nice and tight, it lays down flat. You gotta make sure you don't have any trash or anything under it so you get any blisters. I'm gonna fill all that in nice and tight. And then I just take my six and I'll go about two inches past the patch, all the way around. So this is plaster of Paris. You can do this with regular mud, but as professionals, repairmen, we're gonna do it with hot mud or plaster this is plaster you can refer to another video that i have on how to mix plaster this will be dry to the touch about seven to ten minutes depending on how you mix it so we'll do that and i'll do my feather edge just took an inch and a half and a knife i'm gonna come all the way around and clean that edge up a little bit of trash there out of there. So I'll take my 12 now. And same thing, I'm putting all my pressure on this side and I'm going to leave a lap mark down the center. It's imperative that you leave it kind of heavy. Add a little mud here. I left that lap mark, I feather edge, wiping this side, putting all my pressure on the outside to leave that lap mark down the center. So this is plaster, it'll be dry seven to 10 minutes and we'll come back and I'll show you why I leave that. But ultimately you need to leave that much mud. If you're doing with regular mud, it'll take two coats um, and then you'll have to let this dry completely and sand it, but we'll show you a trick to avoid that. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, here we go back guys. So we left this lap mark, as you can see, this is solid. It's been about 10, 15 minutes, but I'm gonna put the high side of the knife on and I call it raking. So as you can see, it knocks everything out and then just use that mud, if you're doing plaster, to fill in. So we'll get everything nice and level. Essentially what I'm doing is sanding with my knife. This allows us to not come back, not make a mess. So as you see, we've got everything nice and smooth. So I've got a pan of just some regular mud here. I'm going to do what I call an inside skim. So this plaster edge is already hard, so it's fungible. So I'll go right inside that edge, 
just about an inch or so. Put a nice little tight skim on it, but I call it, as I said, an inside skim. So we'll, we're not gonna cover, and this is to get things done quickly, but if you're doing, you know, regular mud, you're gonna wanna sand it, and you don't necessarily have to do that, but if you're trying to do it in one setting, man, I'm a feather edge, I'm gonna keep my knife inside that plaster edge, like so. And then wax on, wax off. Nice and tight. So if you have any edge, just roll that over. So now we've got a nice skim on top of a nice float. We're just gonna take a sponge, just a regular tile sponge, damp, not too wet, and just kind of knock that edge down. This is the plaster edge, so you don't want to get in the middle of it. You just want to work on that plaster part. This helps it blend when we do our texture, which is a light orange peel. So I've got a can of Homex that I'm gonna to use to match this texture. Now again, if you're using regular mud, it'll take two coats and it'll have to dry in between and then you'll have to sand. But again, we try to avoid that. So this Homex wall texture. And so there's adjustments on here. You can go light heavy. This is kind of light. So I've got it adjusted already. And then a trick of the trade, Put these cans in hot water so if you feel a can and it's room temperature or any kind of cold it doesn't spray very well so a trick of the trade put it in a sink of hot water and let it get warm so the warmer it is the better it sprays and it goes on a little thick but as you can see it'll start shrinking up a little bit so you don't want to double it up where it's running down the wall and then you can let that kind of tack up and you know gauge if you need to add more or the size of the balls in the walls. But there it is in a nutshell. Now again, we call it a butterfly patch. People call it California patch, hot patch, whatever. But it's a real easy way to get a patch done if you're in a bad place. I had another guy comment um, in regards to real plaster, gauging plaster, which has a mesh. So you don't have a wood that's sitting a half inch. So it's a great way to do a patch like that for gauging plaster where you have a hole and you've got wood that's an inch and a half or whatever behind. So doing it in Houston Southern style next time.